Want to speak real Spanish from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at SpanishPod101.com. Want to finally start speaking in your target language? In this guide, you'll discover the top seven ways to practice speaking on your own with our lessons. Let's begin. Number one, shadowing. Shadowing is a proven learning technique where all you do is repeat what you hear in order to practice speaking. So access any audio or video lesson on the site and press the play button to start. Then as you listen or watch, just repeat the conversations or even easier, read along out loud with the dialogue section. The script is right there in front of you. With our lessons, you can master entire conversations just like that. Number two, read out loud. I just mentioned it, but reading out loud is another powerful tactic and deserves its own mention. With every lesson, you get written transcripts and translations. So as you play the lesson, read the dialogue out loud as you hear it. Why? By reading out loud, you're also practicing your speaking skills. You can do this with the lesson notes, the lesson transcript, or the dialogue tool. With the dialogue tool, you can listen to each line again and again, and repeat out loud until you master them all. Number three, speed up your reading to speed up your speaking. Being able to speak without thinking is a sign of language mastery. If you're talking to a native and can respond quickly, they'll assume that you're fairly fluent. How can you do this? When you read out loud, try increasing your speed a little bit every time. So start by reading with the dialogue tool. If you're like most learners, you'll read the first line slowly. That's because you're still getting used to the words, which is okay. Reread it. On your second try, you know most of the words and you'll read a little faster. Reread it again. On your third try, you'll be even faster at a native speaker's speed. And being able to read these phrases out loud and fast will help you speak fast. Number four, record and compare yourself with native speakers. In order to sound like a native speaker, you must imitate native speakers. So here's how. Access the voice recorder which is in the dialogue study tool in every lesson. Click on the microphone icon, listen to the native speaker's audio, and then record yourself. You can then compare the two recordings side by side and practice and try again and again until you perfect your pronunciation. Number five, get feedback from our Premium Plus teacher. If you're learning by yourself and don't have access to real teachers, then you can always get feedback from our Premium Plus teachers. With the My Teacher tool, you can record yourself speaking and send the audio file to the teacher. They'll review it and tell you what to improve and how. That's it. Number six, level up your speaking with Premium Plus assignments. With Premium Plus, you can also get assignments that cover reading, writing, listening, and even speaking from your teacher. These assignments can be tailored to your goals and needs. You get a new one every week or anytime you're ready for a new one. Number seven, get even more lessons in the lesson library. If you want even more lessons on speaking and conversations, visit our lesson library and under category, choose conversation. You'll get all of the pathways and lessons that are focused on speaking. If you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share it with anyone who's trying to learn a language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. And if you're ready to finally learn language the fast, fun, and easy way, and start speaking from your very first lesson, get our complete learning program. Sign up for your free lifetime account right now. Click the link in the description. I'll see you next time. Bye! Want to improve reading in your target language? In this guide, you'll discover the top 10 ways to practice reading with our lessons and learning program. Let's begin. Number one, start a lesson and read along with the lesson notes. With every lesson, you get bonus lesson notes. These give you the lesson in writing, the dialogue, the vocabulary, and the grammar explanations. So as you listen to a lesson, read along with the lesson notes. By listening and reading along, you hear how each word is pronounced and can easily keep up. Number two, read with the dialogue study tool. With the dialogue study tool, you get the line by line breakdown of a lesson's conversation. You get the text, the translation, the audio, and if applicable, 
the romanization, so you can read and listen to each line individually. To practice your reading, reread and review each line until you master it. Then, move on to the next line. You get this feature in every one of our lessons. Number three, read along with the lesson transcript. You also get transcripts with every lesson. These are word-for-word -word scripts of everything that was said in the lesson and are completely free to access. So use these to read along. Number four, download the PDF notes and transcripts. Want to practice reading on your own time? Save the lesson notes and transcripts as PDFs to your device and keep them forever. That way, you can open them up and practice reading at any time. You can also print the PDFs out to keep as physical reading material. Number five, practice with extensive reading books. Extensive reading is a learning tactic where you read as many books as possible at a level that's easy for you. And you follow these two rules. One, you skip over words you don't know, and two, you jump to a new book if the current one is boring. The goal is to help you master reading, vocab, and grammar simply by reading a lot without getting stuck on minor words. You can find extensive reading books from absolute beginner level to advanced. These are simple one line per page books and all of the translations are on the lesson page. Simply look for the extensive reading pathways in the lesson library. You can also download these books as PDFs and print them out. Number six, take your time and read slowly. Whether you're reading with the notes, books, or the dialogue tool, be sure to take your time. Read the lines slowly on the first try, just like a child would when they start learning to read. This is so you can get acquainted with every word. Number seven, then speed up your reading. Once you've read a line slowly and are familiar with the words, start speeding up. Reread that same line a little bit faster on the second try, and then a little faster on the third try. Doing this will help you read faster. Number eight, take the reading comprehension video lessons. These lessons are specifically designed to test your reading skills. You're presented with a real life scenario, such as reading a sign at the train station, and are tested on the words presented on the screen. Don't worry, you get the answer at the end. And translations are available in the dialogue section. Number nine, get reading assignments from your Premium Plus teacher. You can also get assignments that cover listening, writing, speaking, and even reading from your teacher. These assignments can be tailored to your goals and needs. You get a new one every week or anytime you're ready for a new one. Number 10, get even more lessons in the lesson library. If you want even more reading lessons, then visit our lesson library and under category, Choose Reading and Writing. You get instant access to all of the pathways and lessons that will help you master all areas of the language, including reading. And if you're ready to finally learn language the fast, fun, and easy way, and start speaking from your very first lesson, get our complete learning program. Sign up for your free lifetime account right now. Click the link in the description. And if you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share it with anyone who's trying to learn a new language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. See you next time. Bye. Hi, everyone. This is Rosa. And today we will be doing the top 15 favorite words in Spanish chosen by fans. So let's begin. Amigo, friend. Me encanta salir con mis amigos. I love hanging out with my friends. Araña, spider. Araña, which means spider. Las arañas me dan mucho miedo. Spiders are really scary to me. <laughs> Bello, beautiful. You can use it both for objects and people, but it's not that common to use it for people nowadays. That drawing is very beautiful. Eh, ese dibujo es muy bello. Contenta, happy. Estoy muy contenta porque aprobé el examen. I'm very happy because I passed the exam. España, Spain. You all should visit Spain. Eh, todos deberíais visitar España. Con. Hola, hello, hola, ¿qué tal estás? Hello, how are you? Pingüino, penguin, me encantaban los pingüinos en la película de Mary Poppins. I love the penguins in the Mary Poppins films. Primavera, spring, eh, me encanta cuando las flores florecen en primavera. Eh, I love when flowers bloom during the spring. Saludable, healthy. 
Ir en a hamburger every day isn't very healthy. Comer una hamburguesa todos los días no es muy saludable. Helado, ice cream. Mi helado preferido es el de avellana. Eh, my favorite ice cream flavor is hazelnuts. A la izquierda, to the left. Para llegar al restaurante tienes que girar a la izquierda. Eh, to get to the restaurant you have to turn to the left. Amor, love. Oh, amor. Amor. ¿Es el amor lo más importante para ti? Is love the most important thing to you? Fiesta, party, fiesta, which means party. <laughs> Cuando era una estudiante de universidad, eh, iba más de fiesta. Eh, when I was a, a university student, I used to party more often. Mm. Otorrinolaringólogo, otolaringologist. Es difícil pronunciar otorrinolaringólogo en español. It is difficult to pronounce otolaringologist in Spanish. <laughs> Why did you... Señorita, miss. Esa señorita baila muy bien el flamenco. That miss dances flamenco very well. And this is the end of today's top 15 favorite words in Spanish chosen by fans. I hope you learned a lot. Uh, thank you very much for watching. And please don't forget to subscribe. Bye. I love the hairstyles of some alpacas. <laughs> oh. Hello everyone, I'm Rosa and today we'll be doing the 10 hardest words to pronounce in Spanish. So let's begin. Frigorífico, refrigerator. Frigorífico, which means refrigerator. Cuando el frigorífico se estropeó, tuvimos que tirar mucha comida. When the refrigerator broke down, we had to throw away a lot of food. Correr, run. Me gustaría algún día correr una maratón. I would like to someday run a marathon. Espantapájaros. Scarecrow. Me gusta cuando la gente viste a los espantapájaros como si fueran personas. I like when people dress up scarecrows as if they were people. Exquisito. Delicious. Eh, fuimos a un restaurante muy caro y toda la comida era exquisita. Eh, We went to a very fancy restaurant and all the food was very delicious. Idiosincrasia, idiosyncrasy. The next word is idiosincrasia, which means idiosyncrasy. Una de sus idiosincrasias es lavarse las manos cada hora. One of his idiosyncrasies is washing his hands every hour. Perro, dog. Cuando era pequeña tenía miedo de los perros. When I was a child, I was scared of dogs. Niño, child. Cuando era niño se portaba muy mal con los otros niños. Eh, when he was a child, he was very bad to the other children. Paraguas, umbrella. The next word is paraguas, which means umbrella. Siempre me olvido el paraguas en los sitios. I always forget my umbrella at places. Pelo, hair. The next word is pelo which means hair. Me corté el pelo hace poco. I cut my hair recently. Pingüino, penguin. The next word is pingüino, which means penguin. Me gusta la forma de andar de los pingüinos. I like how penguins walk. So this is the end of today's 10 hardest words to pronounce in Spanish. I hope you learned something and thank you very much for watching this video. Please don't forget to subscribe. Bye. Pinguino again. <laughs> Pinguinos. <laughs> yeah. Want to speak real Spanish from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at SpanishPod101.com. Hi everyone, this is Rosa. Today we'll be doing the 15 questions you should know in Spanish. So let's begin. ¿Cómo estás? How are you? ¿Cómo estás? Which is how are you? ¿Cómo estáis? Are you fine? <laughs> So, for example, when you meet a friend, you would say, Hola, ¿cómo estás? I think you can use it with almost everyone. Like, it's not, like, super informal or anything, so... ¿Cómo te llamas? What's your name? ¿Cómo te llamas? What's your name? Mi nombre es Rosa. My name is Rosa. What's your name? Tell me. Are you Bob? <laughs> or maybe... Christine? ¿Cuál es tu número de teléfono? What's your phone number? The next question is, ¿cuál es tu número de teléfono? What's your telephone number? 
My telephone number is six two one. In Spain, the telephone code, my country code is thirty four. Cuando es tu cumpleaños? When is your birthday? Cuando es tu cumpleaños? When is your birthday? So, mi cumpleaños es el 21 de noviembre. My birthday is the 21st of November. When is yours? Tell me. <laughs> I'm going to guess when your birthday is. So, maybe the 2nd of May? ¿Qué tipo de música te gusta? What type of music do you like? ¿Qué tipo de música te gusta? What type of music do you like? So, do you like pop? Rock? Hip hop? Uh, R&B? Uh, reggae? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Tell me. ¿De dónde eres? Where are you from? ¿De dónde eres? Where are you from? Yo soy de España. And so tell me where you're from. Maybe you're from Italy or from the United States. ¿Dónde aprendiste español? Where did you learn Spanish? ¿Dónde aprendiste español? Where did you learn Spanish? I learned Spanish at home. Where did you learn it? <laughs> maybe at a class or with these videos, maybe? ¿Dónde está el baño? Where is the bathroom? ¿Dónde está el baño? Uh, where is the toilet? So, for example, when you are at the restaurant and you want to go to the toilet, you can ask the waiter, ¿Dónde está el baño? And um, yeah, he will tell you. ¿Dónde trabajas? Where do you work? The next question is, ¿Dónde trabajas? Which is, where do you work? Do you work in a company? Or maybe you're a freelancer? For example, I don't know, if you're at a party and you meet someone, ¿Dónde trabajas? ¿Cuáles son tus aficiones? What are your hobbies? ¿Cuáles son tus aficiones? Which is, what are your hobbies? If you like traveling, reading, taking photos, drawing, watching films, cooking. <laughs> ¿Durante cuánto tiempo has estudiado español? How long have you been studying Spanish? The next question is, ¿Durante cuánto tiempo has estudiado español? For how long have you been studying Spanish? It's a long process, but it would be worth it. Yeah. ¿Has estado en España? Have you been to Spain? So, the next question is, ¿Has estado en España? Have you been to Spain? And if so, where have you been to? Don't forget to go to the south of Spain. It's very beautiful. <laughs> ¿Qué es esto? What's this? ¿Qué es esto? What is this? So, yeah, you can just point at something and ask another person. ¿Qué es esto? ¿Qué es esto? ¿Qué es esto? ¿Qué es esto? Can you guess? <laughs> ¿Qué has dicho? What did you say? ¿Qué has dicho? Which is, what did you say? When you didn't understand well what another person said. You can tell them, ¿Qué has dicho? ¿Te gusta la comida española? Do you like Spanish food? ¿Te gusta la comida española? Do you like Spanish food? So, do you like Spanish omelets? Or what else can you like? Do you like gazpacho? So, yeah, this is the end of today's 15 questions you should know in Spanish. So, I hope it was useful for you. And thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Bye. Please tell me everything about you. <laughs> Where do you? Hi everyone, I'm Rosa and today we'll be doing 10 phrases to amaze native speakers. So let's begin. El español es divertido y fácil de aprender. Spanish is fun and easy to learn. El español es divertido y fácil de aprender. Spanish is fun and easy to learn. I think the pronunciation is very easy in Spanish. Yeah. Aparte de saber español, también puedo hablar algunos otros idiomas. Apart from knowing Spanish, I can speak a few other languages as well. Aparte de saber español, también puedo hablar algunos otros idiomas. Apart from knowing Spanish, I can speak a few other languages as well. Tell me which other languages you can speak. I can speak English, um, yeah, a bit of Japanese and French, but yeah, I have to study more. Estoy aprendiendo español por mí mismo. I'm learning Spanish all by myself. Estoy aprendiendo español por mí mismo. I'm learning Spanish all by myself. So good for you. <laughs> like I know it's hard, but if you are, I don't know, if you are constant and you do something every day, I think you can also like learn languages by yourself. Like today there are so many resources on the internet. And... 
Hablaré español como un nativo en tres años. I'll speak Spanish like a native speaker in three years. Hablaré español como un nativo en tres años. I'll speak Spanish like a native speaker in three years. Oh, good luck. <laughs> He estado aprendiendo español por diez años. I've been learning Spanish for ten years. He estado aprendiendo español por diez años. I've been learning Spanish for ten years. Yeah, I must have been studying in English for longer than that. Me tomó solo un año para hablar fluidamente. It took me only one year to become fluent. Me tomó solo un año para hablar fluidamente. It took me only one year to become fluent. Wow. <laughs> I admire you so much. <laughs> Gracias, pero en realidad no soy un hablante nativo. Thank you, but I'm not a native speaker actually. Gracias, pero en realidad no soy un hablante nativo. Thank you, but I'm not a native speaker actually. Tell me your secrets. <laughs> Puedo memorizar alrededor de 50 palabras nuevas en español al día. I can memorize around 50 new Spanish words a day. Puedo memorizar alrededor de 50 palabras nuevas en español al día. I can memorize around 50 new Spanish words a day. Wow, it's important to be constant. Yeah. Just be sure to revise like the words you have studied before so you don't forget. Puedo ver películas en español sin subtítulos. I can watch Spanish movies without subtitles. Puedo ver películas en español sin subtítulos. I can watch Spanish movies without subtitles. I still use subtitles for English. Sé cómo conjugar todos los verbos irregulares. I know how to conjugate all the irregular verbs. Sé cómo conjugar todos los verbos irregulares. I know how to conjugate all the irregular verbs. Yeah, there are a lot of them, so that would be great if you <laughs> knew how to did all of them right. There might even be Spanish people who cannot do that properly <laughs> in some cases, so... This is the end of today's 10 phrases to amaze native speakers. So I hope you get the chance to use them. Um, thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Bye! Yeah, I can! <laughs> it's me! <laughs> Hi everybody, I'm Rosa. Welcome to As a Teacher, where I'll answer some of your most common Spanish questions. The question for this lesson is, what are the main differences between Spanish from Spain, Latin America and the Caribbean? Spanish is one of the world's most widely spoken languages. It's the official language in 19 countries, as well as in Puerto Rico. It's so widespread because of Spanish colonial history. During the colonial period, Spanish mixed with native regional languages and that's why Spanish is so different around the world. There's no standard Spanish dialect, only regional dialects. So it's common for Spanish learners to run into different kinds of Spanish, especially in terms of pronunciation. In the US, Latin American Spanish is what's most commonly taught in schools. It's spoken in most of Central America and South America, including Mexico, and excluding Argentina, Brazil, Suriname, French Guiana, and Guyana. Latin American Spanish has strong R's and a relatively clean pronunciation. Words are pronounced mostly as they are written. Here are just a few regional varieties of Latin American Spanish. Caribbean Spanish often drops S's at the end of the words, making it sound a lot faster than Spanish from other countries. Mexican Spanish take a lot of vocabulary from the indigenous language Nahuatl. You may be familiar with the word chocolate, which comes from the word chocolate in Nahuatl. Also, the double L in Mexico has a Y sound. So, my name is Ricardo, is me llamo Ricardo. Colombian Ecuadorian Spanish is a mixture of Caribbean Spanish and coastal Spanish. Uh, here the double L uh, usually sounds like a J, uh, like uh, me llamo Ricardo. Argentinian Spanish is, a, is in a category by itself. It's very different from the Spanish spoken in the rest of Latin American countries. It has some indigenous Guarani vocabulary, but also French and Italian immigrants uh, strongly influence this dialect. An interesting fact about Argentinian Spanish is that Argentinian slang, called Lunfardo, was originally a made-up prison language. 
Prisoners, mostly Italia, used it so guards couldn't understand what they were saying. Uh, now, Lunfardo words are used all over Argentina. Argentinian Spanish also uses vos, uh, the formal you address, instead of tu, the more common informal address in Latin America. Uh, the double L is pronounced like uh, J or Z, H, like in Me llamo Ricardo. Spanish in Spain is called Castilian Spanish. Some pronunciations are very different than the other kinds of Spanish we've already mentioned. The double L is pronounced differently depending on the region within Spain. The Latin American CC is pronounced with a TH and sound like C, C. For example, gracias, meaning thank you, is pronounced uh, gracias <laughs> in Latin American Spanish and gracias in Castilian Spanish. Another major difference is that Castilian Spanish often uses the plural form vosotros instead of uh, the form ustedes, which is used in Latin America. Pretty fascinating, isn't it? If you have any other questions, leave a comment and I'll try to answer them. Ciao! Hi everybody, Rosa here. Welcome to Ask a Teacher, where I'll answer some of your most common Spanish questions. The question for this lesson is... What are some popular Spanish idioms? In English, we have our fair share of idioms, like It's raining cats and dogs, or even What's up? Here are some Spanish idioms you should know. Number 10 is estar empanado, meaning to be spaced out. Literally, it means to be breaded. In Spain, we have a lot of breaded foods like la empanada gallega. So, every time your mind freezes and you can think, you are getting empanado or empanada. Number 9 is dormir como un tronco, meaning to sleep like a trunk. This means that you slept very well. For example, he dormido como un tronco, meaning I slept like a trunk. Number 8, chorizo, means sausage. And if you are carnivorous, you are going to find Spanish chorizo delicious. But don't be surprised if you hear this word in reference to a person. That means they are a thief, burglar or swindler. Number seven is one that doesn't make much sense, but you'll often hear. It is hace un tiempo de perros. Literally, it's a dog weather, meaning it's terrible weather. Number six is a phonetic challenge. ¡Qué chorrada! Chorrada... Wow, sounds difficult. We have the CH and a double R. So, what does chorrada mean? If we say, ¡Qué chorrada! We are expressing that something is not important, has no sense or is absurd. Number five is costar un ojo de la cara, which means it's ridiculously expensive, but it literally means it costs an eye out of the head. Number four, aprobar por los pelos, literally means to pass by the hair, referring to an exam. If you say, aprobé por los pelos, you're saying that you got the lowest score or close to it, but passed the exam. Hopefully, you don't use this expression too much. Number three is, que guay, meaning cool. Here, we have a very useful multipurpose word. Do you want to go to the beach? Why? Do you like my trousers? Que guays! How was the party last night? Muy guay! It's similar to good, okay, perfect or beautiful. However, be careful! It should only be used in casual or colloquial situations. Number two is tener un cacao. Literally translated, it means to have a cacao. However, the real meaning is to have a lot of trouble or to be in a mess. Lastly, number one is tener el guapo subido, which literally means to have the good looking up. The meaning of this may be easy for you to guess. You can use this phrase when suddenly one of your friends looks stunning. ¿Te ha pasado algo bueno? Hoy tienes el guapo subido. Did anything good happen to you? Today you're looking handsome. How was this lesson? Pretty interesting, right? Do you have any more questions? Please leave them in the comments below and I'll try to answer them. Hasta luego, see you later! 
Want to speed up your language learning? Take your very first lesson with us. You'll start speaking in minutes and master real conversations. Sign up for your free lifetime account. Just click the link in the description.